haven't done an update about my YA fairy fantasy in a long time. So since I just finished my first round of betas, in this video I'm going to answer some of your burning questions about Project Fairy Fantasy including what is my book about, what inspired this book, how have I approached writing it, how long is it, when can you read it, and make sure to stay until the end because that is when I'm going to finally reveal my new working title because God knows it needs a better title than Project Fairy Fantasy. To not only answer some of your guys' questions that you sent on Instagram, but to also show you some cool things about my book, I wanted to take you guys to my author website and go over to the books page because our first question is from Phoebe. And Phoebe asked just what is your blurb? What's the synopsis? Basically, what is your book about? So here you can see a little bit about Project Fairy Fantasy. It is a young adult fantasy. And my pitch has been this. As an impending clan war threatens to tear Phelan apart, five fairy younglings are forced to represent their clans in a competition for ultimate rule that will determine the fate of their world. A princess, a mute, a merman, a blind, and a pirate. So I definitely want to work on this a lot more because I know pitches should be geared more towards the main character and that is my pixie pirate here which you can see a little bit of a little inspiration here about her and I have another aesthetic I'm going to show you guys as well just dedicated to my pixie pirate but I still think that until I can sort of focus this a little bit more it tells you a lot about what's going on. These five characters are definitely really integral to to the entire story and the fairy clans and what's going on with the world. I've sort of been talking about my book using the terminology of epic or high fantasy. One of the questions I got from RGD Writes is how long is it? And right now it's about 141,000 words. That's at least this draft that I have sent my beta readers recently. So there is a lot going on. The external plot is definitely really big, um, but I definitely want to come up with a version of this pitch that focuses on my pirate. Some other lovely Instagram people like Elsa and Bookish Markings were asking more about the world and the characters too. Do I have any interesting creatures? So to do this, I'm actually gonna pop over to my Twitter a little bit and show you a few aesthetics that I think tell you a little bit more about my characters. Um, I have three female main characters and then two male characters. And I haven't created aesthetics for the guys yet, but here are the girls. This is my pixie pirate Quinn. And you can see a little bit about here. You can also see some dragon action going on. So my world definitely has dragons and each of my characters represents one of the five clans. So Quinn is one that lives more in the mountainy area and each of my clans sort of has a specific value that they value above everything else and hers is strength. Quinn is also an anti-hero which has been really fun to write and I'm super excited for you guys to get to know her and see her journey when this book comes out. Then we have Vale, and Vale is more of the upper class, and her clan values knowledge more than anything else, and she is just really driven and sassy, and she's a lot of fun. Then we have Alice, and she's very mysterious. She's mute. She's a beast tamer, so I definitely have some just fantastical creatures, like dragons and stuff like that, but then also some regular animals, as you can see here. Her clan lives in more of the woodsy area, and values protecting and cultivating life above all else. And if you you want to find out even more I have a whole highlights on my Instagram about my work in progress which is really fun to watch and then you can also look up my hashtag which is project fairy fantasy and there I have tagged a bunch of my posts that have sort of chronicled my journey and that's sort of the top post but you can go to most recent and go from the oldest to the newest and just see all the updates and see how this book has progressed. Some of these posts even have little snippets of my writing so I hope you guys enjoy that. Right Holly Davis also asked a little bit about the inspiration and sort of comp titles and different things that have just generally inspired the story. So I'm just going to list off a bunch of them to you. Um, definitely Peter Pan and Hook and like sort of the fairy lore that's in there. Epicness of like Lord of the Rings, even anime like Sword Art Online. Certain aspects of Elphaba from the musical Wicked and Elsa from the movie Frozen definitely inspired some things that my main character deals with and goes through. Obviously there's inspiration from Pirates of the Caribbean, TV shows like Rain, 
once, Shannara Chronicles. And although I don't think this book series is going to be super long, it's probably only going to be a duology, I've definitely been inspired by great series like Hunger Games, Divergent, and The Lunar Chronicles. I've also been really inspired by character art on Pinterest. So if you guys visit my Pinterest account, you'll see some character inspiration and world building inspiration, which is a little more generalized. There's a little bit of Project Fairy Fantasy here and, and fantasy creatures, but my patrons got exclusive access access to a secret Pinterest board with a few different boards within that that represent my different clans and different parts of the world. And I would show you guys a sneak peek of that right now, but it's actually titled my new working title. So I'm going to show you guys that at the end. So definitely stay tuned for that. Next, Little Novelist on Instagram asked, when can I read it? And that's a really great question, especially because I am hoping to traditionally published. And I'll tell you guys a little bit about that in a second. But first, I just want to show you the story status, right? I came up with this concept years and years and years ago. It has evolved over time, definitely became more serious about it within the last year and a half. And over that last year and a half, I have been vigorously outlining. You guys know I have a bunch of videos about plotting and outlining on this channel. I have also done a few drafts. I'm considering this current draft that I sent my betas draft three and sort of some of the edits that I've done as I've been sending chapters to them, sort of like a draft four. But before I got there, I was sending chapters to my CPs and they they have been amazing. You guys really, really need critique partners. They are the first line of defense and they are awesome. So if you don't have those, I definitely suggest to get some before you go to beta readers um, and that you do some editing based on their feedback. Then I have been in like a more than 12 week session of sending batches of chapters to my beta readers, getting feedback, sending questionnaires so I can sort of get specific feedback from them. And I'm actually really excited because what I plan to do next on my YouTube channel is to do a series of beta reader focused videos, not necessarily to say this is exactly what everybody should do, but just to share what I did and what I found helpful and what I didn't find helpful. I definitely have some things I want to do different next time, but I feel like I just learned a lot. So if you guys are excited about that and you have certain questions about beta readers and how to find them and how to run your rounds of betas and how to process feedback, definitely let me know your questions below and I will try to answer them in my future videos. The next thing I need to do is is do another round of editing with the beta feedback. And I hope to do this along with like a little break before I get into editing so I can have some perspective so that I can then edit and be ready for some of these awesome author mentorship programs that are hosted online like Pitch Wars and Author Mentor Match. And the last year, even though I was nowhere close to where I am now with my story, I so wanted to submit to these mentor programs because I would just love to have have somebody read through my story, somebody who is already agented, already published, knows more about traditional publishing in general, and could really sort of guide me and help me make my story even better. So usually you want to have at least your second draft done. And now since I have like my, my third slash fourth kind of draft done, I'm really excited. I have no more excuses. I'm going to submit to Pitch Wars and or Author Mentor Match, which is going to be happening. See, Pitch Wars is at the end of September. And I don't think author mentor match dates have been announced yet. If anybody knows, let me know in the comments. Um, but that should be October, November time or something like that. Then it would be time to query agents and to see if my story is ready, if I can find an agent that connects with it enough or that they think the market is ready for it. And here's the thing, you guys. I know so many of my friends who have self-published. I actually think that I would really love self-publishing. So I've almost thought of being a hybrid author or to just go self-publishing but honestly I don't know if this makes me a bad person but I sort of want just like a little validation from the traditional book community to just either it's mentors or agents for somebody to sort of say, hey, like your book has good quality, like you're a good writer, even if they say the market isn't right for it right now, or it's just not the book I'm looking for, but it is good writing and you have a solid book here, I would definitely go self-publishing route, even just to get the book in my hands and to get the book out to you guys. But I'd rather get some of that kind of feedback from people in the traditional world before I went that route. I hope that makes sense. I think everybody's entitled to whatever direction they want to take, but that's sort 
sort of my direction right now and we'll see how it goes. If I enter a mentor program and start querying, I could get an agent within the next six months, within the next year. Even then we would still have to find a publisher and publishers sometimes take a while to produce the books. So to answer Little Novelist's question, long story short, it might take a while, but you never know. And I could always go the self-publishing route if I feel confident enough with this story and maybe try traditional publishing with a different book. You'll have to subscribe and tune in to find out. I have one more question before I reveal my new working title to you guys, but before I answer that, I also wanted to let you know that if you want to stay up to date, a great way is to sign up for book updates, which takes you to my monthly newsletter. And as a newsletter subscriber, you also get to be a member of my author community. And as a member, you get access to a secret page on my website where I not not only share resources, but I also give first looks and other inside information into my journey getting this book published. But to answer this last question, Phoebe asked, how did I approach writing this book? And I actually have a few videos in a playlist called My Work in Progress Project Fairy Fantasy. And if you especially go to my writing process video, this talked all about how I plotted and started writing my first draft of my work in progress. But just to give a little update to that video as well, when Bethany and I were doing our Save the Cat experiment series, we got to interview Jessica Brody, who's the author of Save the Cat Writes a Novel. And I just asked her like, how long do you plot before you start writing your book, right? And I talk a lot about how long I plotted in this video. And I think she said like a couple weeks or something of plotting. And then she would get right into that fast draft and learn more about her story and then maybe do some replotting and get into like that first real draft. And that interview with Jessica Brody just blew my mind. There's so much good stuff in there and I'll link that below. But seriously, being on this side of so many drafts and betas over the last year and a half, I really wanna try her method next time because I spent months <laughs> of plotting. Like you guys have seen my series Bible video. And yeah, I did all of that before I really started writing a whole lot. And to some extent, I think that was super, super helpful. And to another extent, I wish I had waited to do the whole series Bible and like massive plotting until I had written my fast draft. So if you're asking how I actually wrote this book, this video tells a little bit about how I come up with my story ideas. And this video actually takes you through my whole first year of becoming a full-time writer and just how I went from ground zero with no book to where I am today. But if you're asking how I would go about writing a new book, which I think over the next couple weeks as I take a break from this current work in progress so I can get some perspective and maybe start writing something new. I definitely wanna try this other way of like sort of plotting a little bit and then writing a fast draft and then going back to plotting before doing the new draft. All right, the time has come. I am going to tell you guys what my new working title is for Project Fairy Fantasy. If you're wondering how I came up with this title, I actually have a whole video right here, my secret formula for book title ideas, where I did a bunch of study about coming up with good book titles and actually came up with a fun formula to think of a ton of ideas. So if you are stuck on thinking of a book title for your book or even you just want a better title, even if it isn't the one you eventually land on, this would be a great video for you guys. I definitely follow this formula to come up with my title. Again, with traditional publishing, the publisher has the ultimate say on what the title will be, but this title definitely ties into so much of my book. So without further ado, I'm going to show you the title by showing you a little preview of my Pinterest inspiration board for this story. So drum roll, please. Here it is. My new working title is On Wings of Ash and Dust. I'm so excited to share it with you guys. I hope you like it. Again, wings that sort of relates to fairies and dragons and fantasy in general, I think. And then ash and dust has a very significant meaning throughout the book. As I said before, I'm hoping to make this a duology. So I have already started playing with the sequel's title and it would sort of mirror this on or in blank of blank and blank. So yeah, definitely let me know what you guys think. I'm super curious. I'm super nervous. But I also just wanted to show you a little preview of these exclusive inspiration Pinterest boards that my patrons have access to. I do have specific names for the clans, but I just felt like I didn't want to share it in this video. But you can see clan one, two, three, four, and five. You can see a little bit about the pirates, some other locations and aspects, and just fairies in general. So this was definitely a fun exclusive that I'm giving just to my patrons. And if you want to see even more 
definitely check us out over there. We'd love to have you. You guys know that I love sharing my writing journey and my progress with this story here on YouTube, but if you want even more quick updates on the daily, I am always doing that on social media. And if you wanna be the first to see exclusive things like my working title or my inspiration boards or hear about the other fun things that hopefully will be coming soon, you should definitely sign up for my newsletter and consider becoming a patron. If you have any other questions that I didn't answer, definitely leave them in the comments below. I might include them in a future video or maybe even do a live stream because you guys know I love doing live streams and just chatting with you guys too. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today, but I'm super excited about this beta reader series that will be coming soon. And until then, if you want more readerly videos, definitely check out one of these guys and we'll see you there.